Welcome. This is the Jenkins Governance Board meeting. It's the 27th of November, 2023. Thanks for joining. Uh, topics on the agenda include upcoming calendar, uh, news items, action items, community activity, and I've added an item that was not in the preview agenda that I sent on the Con Jenkins Contributor Spotlight. Oops. And so then governance topics, added a topic related to a letter of recommendation request from a GSOC contributor that I wanted some help on and attribution request for the downloads page. Any topics that people want to add to the agenda that aren't already covered there? Okay, then let's go ahead with the agenda items we've got. So on the upcoming calendar, Jenkins 2.426.2 is scheduled to release in a little over two weeks. Chris Stern is the release lead and he's opened the backporting pull request. Uh, the release candidate is scheduled to go out on Wednesday. Uh, it looks positive. The backporting pull request contains only two items and neither of them is particularly huge. Uh, next weekly release is 2.434. And there will be a two week break in the LTS schedule over the end of the calendar year. So we like to, in the last two weeks of December and that, that holiday period for many regions to take time off. So instead of four weeks between 2.426.2 and its next release.3, there will be six weeks. Uh, it was discussed in the developer list I don't expect any break in the weekly release schedules because they're automated. We're not gonna turn off the automation. They, it's not harmful to have a weekly release that has relatively few changes in it. Any questions on any of those release related dates? Okay, the next topic is FOSDM 2024 is our next major event. February 2nd through the 4th of 2024, on Friday, the Fe February the 2nd, we'll have a Jenkins Contributor Summit all day at a facility in, in Belgium that John Mark Mason has reserved for us. He's gathering agenda topics in this community forum. And you're welcome to propose them there. We've already got understood that Uli, you'll be there and that Alex plans to be there. I plan to be there and or I have high hopes to be there and I expect that Bruno will be there. I'm not yet sure, actually, if I will be there, I hope to also have Basel there. <laughs> Depends on budgets. Any questions on FOSDM 2024? All right, the next topics are on the news items. Two, a little less than two weeks ago, we released Jenkins 2.426.1, and the ratings look really good. Congratulations to everyone who was so involved in this release. Notice that number 79, that's users who have on their own. Oh, somebody says they rolled back. Okay. The data has changed since I captured this about uh, 30 or 45 minutes ago. 70, 79 say no major issues. Two who said they encountered notable issues and one says I had to roll back, but did not give us an issue report number. So I don't know what their cause was. When I look at the Jenkins JIRA tracker, things look really good for it. The removal of prototype JS seems to be going very, very smoothly. Uh, Java 11 end of life administrative monitors get some, some noise from people, more even more noise from the Red Hat Enterprise Linux where people say, but what do I do? I'm stuck on CentOS 7. And the answer is you get off CentOS 7. Right. That's we're all we're doing is giving you six months warning that that operating system is dead to the vendor in six months. And Java 21 support. Thanks. Special thanks to Basel. He detected a, an intermittent memory leak in one of the automated through one of the automated tests and submitted a script security plugin pull request to resolve the intermittent memory leak that was just released less than two hours ago. So thanks very much. That's a good sign that Java 21 is looking good. And we're detecting, we detected an issue that Basel, I think you had said it failed in one of 50 or one of 20 
test runs? Yeah, one out of 25. So, so it truly was one of these inter intermittent failures, but that's, it's good that we're testing Java 21. We are watching the JIRA issues quite closely. There is one issue related to the removal of an adjunct of a, a stapler file that is getting some noise and we'll need some more investigation as we go forward. Any questions on the news items? Which issue is the adjunct one? Do you remember? Uh, I, I, can, I can get it separately. Okay. I think it was, let's see, 72306 is the issue number. Thanks. Uh-huh. Yeah, and and it's we're, I'm I'm working with uh, I've been asking questions to the the submitter and a new submitter who attached to it. Oh, I just actually I already fixed that in Scriptler like a couple of days ago, but I don't think it's been released yet. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, well, and the the Scriptler problem was not the one that worried me as much as the as the next comment from a user, which was unrelated completely different but happen to have the same message so that's the one that the michael lupo thing that worries me more all right action items then is our next next on the list so i had an action to create an issue to drop the weekly build of bomb that action item is implemented and done uh, basel we had listed that you were going to drop the middle two lines from the full test label uh, I don't, I don't remember if that happened or not. Do you want to give a report on that? Well, I filed the issue like we talked about. Oh, good. Okay. But that's so about it. The issue has been filed. Great. That's, that was the action item. So I'll put that in. Thanks. And then Damian was going to create an issue to switch the agent implementation to virtual machines. And I, I didn't find an issue in the tracker there. I'll have to go looking separately. Uli, you had an action item to propose a PR revising the election process to nominate a, a month earlier. Anything you want to report there? Um, I propose the PR now. Oh, good. Okay. And it waits for reviews now. I think Alex already reviewed it, and yeah, it would be helpful if someone else could review it as well. Good. All right. Thank you. I don't know the number right now, but yeah. You will find it. <laughs> right. So I assume the PR was submitted to the Jenkins.io repository. And yeah. therefore, yeah, it's it's on my list to review then. Great. Thank you. All right. Next action items was run the officer. Oops. Run the officer and board elections. Alex or Uli, you want to give a, a further report there? Uh, for sure. But I don't think there's anything new to say compared to the last meeting like there will be no elections i've closed the um election group on the community forum so people can't join to it anymore but that's basically it so i will think you... oh, yeah um i think we need to remove all from a few groups and add basil to a few groups in the mid of december when the actual transition happens but we should revise the um, documentation from last year, which groups exact, exactly need to change there. Because if I remember correctly, you wrote that down and I think we can simply reuse that. Great. Yeah, so that's right. So remove Oleg and add Basel to the appropriate groups. Now, do you plan to do a blog post or other form of announcement? Yeah, I actually have a blog post in draft, or do I have? Good question. Uh, I think we should definitely publish a blog post, but around the time when the actual transition happens, like not now, right. because Oleg is still a board member, that would be weird. But around the time we change that, we should announce that Oleg is out of the board and Basil is a new board member, similar like we did last year. Great. Thank you. Thanks very much. And which date is it? Is it on the 2nd December or the 11th? I had made notes on the 11th, but it's a good question. Did I, maybe my notes are wrong. The 11th is a Saturday, maybe the 10th or 13th. Okay.
Oh, no, you're completely right. That's the 11th. That is the last governance meeting we'll have this year. Okay, so it's it's on a, on the date of the governance meeting that we'll do the transition. Absolutely. Okay, not not on the. Uh, I thought in the past we'd done it on the. And I guess it doesn't matter crucially. In the past, I think it had been as Uli mentioned, December second, independent of governance meeting dates. Uli, do I am I remembering correctly or? Well, actually, because I just filed the new pull request uh, that documents the new process, I found the date the 2nd of December. So I did not remember it, but I've seen it in uh, in our documents. So I wondered why we have such a, yeah, yeah a, it's not a strange uh, date, but typically I would say we have... A, a period is until 31 of December or something like that, and not the second or not the 11th. Uh, these are both somehow strange days for an election period. Right, compared to end of month or start of month. Yeah, but actually it's not a, yeah, a political position, so it's okay if we choose the 11th. So I'm fine with 11th. So whatever makes sense okay, so alex you're okay with the 11th i assume and basil no objections from you yeah i simply chose the 11th because that is the last governance meeting and during the meeting we can make sure that everything works out that we didn't forget anything but i also agree the second is an arbitrary weird choice great okay so we'll We'll look to the governance meeting on the 11th as the place where we check that all the changes are correct and complete. Good, all right, thank you. Anything else on the governance officer and board elections? I, I wanted to go back to that previous bug that we had talked about, if we have a minute. Yes. Um, the the user, who the second user that you were referring to just updated the ticket and said mm. that they have solved their problem and sorry for spamming a different bug report. So oh, good. we're good with that. And the original problem with the scripler I already fixed last week and it was released already. So I think we're all I think we're good to go with with that ticket. Excellent. I'll make sure the I'll make sure to watch the ticket in case there are any other updates. Thank you. Thanks very much, Basel. Thank you. Thank you. All right, other action items. So I have the action item to converge us to subprojects and SIGs into a single concept called working groups. No progress, sorry. Next one, I am proud to say that there is some progress. Kevin Martins has started his local Kubernetes development environment to prepare to remove the J Chinese Jenkins site. And Damian took us through a tour to uh, how you do that. I need to do the same. And then once Kevin and I have got it, we'll meet with Damien to do one more step before we're ready to submit the pull request that actually removes the site. It's a, a change to the Helm charts that deploy the Jenkins.io site. And therefore Damien correctly said, hey, let's have you test drive this locally. Be sure that you're confident in your pull request. And once you've prototyped it and seen it, then we submit it to review. Uh, let's see. I've also got the action item to draft a proposal to the board for policy and phrasing changes on licensing. No progress there. My apologies. That's that's going to be delayed. It may be all the way until the first of uh, until January 2024 before I start on it. And then the last was update the GitHub repository. I've been faithful about updating the community site, but I've still got to go back and touch the update. The, the GitHub repository. So we have a, an archived copy outside of community.jenkins.io. Any other action items that I might've missed or topics that need to be discussed? Okay, next topic then is community activity. So we've got, we've got a, a, a preparation for a new site that will be coming online, contributors.jenkins.io as a way to highlight the stories of our top contributors. The, the catalyst for this was the realization that Linux Foundation contributor stats show that we've got 500 to 600 
Jenkins contributors in any given 30 day period. That's a great result. However, we did some additional analysis and what we see is that the top 30 contributors, so 5% or less, are contributing the vast majority of pull requests to the Jenkins project. And so it is much, much more valuable for us to work to retain those top 30 contributors than to worry about adding new contributors into the, into the big pool. So we've started a project to retain top contributors in the advocacy and outreach SIG. And what we've done is first did some data gathering to identify those top contributors based on pull request data, based on other, some other data sources, looking who's, who are these top contributors, and then ask them to answer a survey about their experiences coming to Jenkins and deciding to be a Jenkins contributor. Then what Kevin Martins has done is he's preparing the answers to those surveys to be used on this site, contributors.jenkins.io, where we will see those new contributors, or those not new contributors, those contributors and their stories as part of this site. The infra team has, has provided a repository to host the stories. Uh, the site content will be visible later this week on contributors.jenkins.io. It will be, and its processes will be similar to how we do stories.jenkins.io today. Thanks to Alex as the first of the, of the highlights. Alex, thank you very much. I think you were one of the first respondents to the proposal. Alex Earl is also up. And the idea is that we'll spotlight a new contribute, contributor about every two weeks with 30 plus contributors that gives us a good year's worth of seed material for this initiative. In addition to that, CloudBees has donated funds for a thank you gift to be sent to these top 30 contributors and Alyssa Tong's coordinating that. A lot of talking from me. Any questions from you as board members on this topic? Any concerns? Any things where you're worried or things that we need to we need to address? No, I think this it's is really great. Good idea. I wanted to yeah, Sorry. I wanted to highlight that it's I not a matter know. of one to the exclusion of the other, but doing both. Doing both uh recruiting new contributors and retaining existing ones. There's no uh it's this whole thing is not to, to the exclusion of one side or the other, but just making sure that we're balanced in our approach. And I think that's a good thing to highlight because we still are doing recruiting efforts. Good, thank you, good insight. Uli, your comment. Yes, I think it's a really good idea to see the people behind the project. So typically you see only yeah the initialized uh, GitHub credentials or something like that, but you don't know who is or who are these people? So now you can see them. This is a really good idea. I, and I agree with you. I think I, I like Basel's point very, very much that this is not excluding new contributors. What for me it was is a realization that I had been so intensely focused on the pro the efforts to to gather new contributors that I was losing, losing track of the fact that retaining our existing contributors is actually much more valuable, right? Adding 10 new, new contributors at, to the loss of one of those top 30 is an unbalanced. So we, we want to balance our efforts to retain these top contributors. We want them to know how grateful we are for what they do for the Jenkins project. Great, thank you. Any comments from others? All right, thank you. So next topic then was was Java 17, uh, Java 11, 17 and 21. And here, the key thing is the Jenkins enhancement proposal and I've got a bunch of work to do there. Uh, Bustle's done a very good job of noting that we need to be much more detailed in our planning for this what, it, what does it mean to add a new Java version and how do we do it? What does it mean to make it the recommended version? And for me right now, the concern is what are the steps we need to do when we drop a, J a Java version? And the reason this one is important is come October of 2024, 
when Java 11 is no longer supported, we want to be executing a well-defined plan that has a good way of retaining everybody and keeping things smooth and comfortable for users. So further refinements are coming in the JEP. My apologies that it's not made the progress yet, but it will. Any questions on that Java support plan? Okay, next topic then is uh, into the governance topics. I had a request from a former Google Summer of Code student, Rishab Budolia, uh, asking for a letter of re recommendation as part of his application to an advanced degree program at a university. I am happy to provide the letter of recommendation, but he said, hey, it needs to come from the organization on organization letterhead. So that's a US thing on paper that has our logo on it. My question to the board was, is it okay with the board if I write the letter of recommendation as Mark Waite, but place the Jenkins logo at the top of the page and in the from statement say that it's from Mark Waite, a member of the Jenkins board and a Google Summer of Code mentor. Is that okay? Or am I misusing my position as a member of the board to do this? Comments? Uh, Basel. Oh, Basel, you're giving a thumbs up. Okay, that's good. I take that as a yes. Uli, your experience in academia probably is best to guide me here. I realize you're not a U.S. university, but nonetheless, what what would you, any guidance you want to offer here on how we should handle this? Yeah, I think uh, I also have to write such recommendations for students who work in or yeah, who apply my courses and then they want to go to a company and they want to have some recommendation or they want to join another university in another country and therefore you need some recommendations and typically yeah i do it it's hard work <laughs> to do such a recommendation and yeah and i think if you worked with with students somehow yeah, it would be fine if you would do it for us because I don't know the student at all. So yeah, it would be helpful if someone who worked with him can write this recommendation. And I'm fully supporting if this. And if we put our Jenkins sign on it, it's fine for me as well. It does make sense. Thank you, great, okay, so. Now, one of the other things that Rishab said that they require is an organization email address, and we don't have those. So I'm just going to use my, my mark.earl.wait at gmail.com address and hope that that will be sufficient. Um, any, any comments or concerns from others on the idea? We have the governance board mailing list as a oh, email address. Oh, oh, that's a that's an interesting idea. Yes. Okay. Add it the looks governance. More official. <laughs> right, right. At, at least as one of the addresses, right? Why not? I mean, adding my email address and the governance board, even better. Good. Okay. Thank you. Good suggestion. Any other insights or concerns there? Okay, the next topic is an attribution request for the downloads page from JFrog. This one, I, I like the request because it reminds me that we want to be thankful to our sponsors and find ways to express that gratitude in ways that help them. So JFrog submitted a, one of the, the friends of Jenkins at JFrog asked that we add an attribution section to our downloads page. So that's this page here. So Jenkins download saying, hey, thanks to, and at the bottom here, we have public cloud, but we don't have a thanks to our sponsors who host the download sites. I thought that's a good idea. In this case, JFrog actually does not host the content that we download from this site. We use our own mirror system, but 
it's a good excuse. It seemed like a good excuse for me. Let's describe the architecture in a link and provide the JFrog logo and the Oregon State University logo and the Tsinghua University logo and et cetera on this downloads page with a link to our downloads architecture description so that people understand how we handle downloads. I don't think that this requires board approval per se, but I wanted you to be aware that we're, we're doing such a thing. Any concerns or comments there? Okay. Do you, do you need any help uh, creating the PR for this or, or is, is that, is that already you have covered? I, I haven't, I haven't created the PR. That's a, that if you'd be willing to take, I, I could use the help just because I've got so many other things that I'm worried about. Um, if you, if you're available, Basel, I'd love to have the help on it. If not, I'm also okay. It's, it's certainly something I can do and have done before. Yeah, I could take the action item to do this if you just give me the requirements for what they would like to be attributed for. Great. Yeah. Okay. I will let me, I'm going to put that on the action items list then and let's, we'll go from there. So Basel create, actually let's put it this way. Mark provide details of the attribution for the downloads page, Basel create the blog post, not the blog post, create the attribution page, attribution entries for the page. Great, added to the action item list. Thank you, thanks very much. There, you see them. Anything else on the attribution request? Now, I guess there is one, one idea that Hervé Lemaire had offered in a conversation with him. He, he noted that the Eclipse Temerin project uses a, a thank you widget on their top level page. I wanted to show it to you just to see if you thought that this would be okay. When they this thing right here says, thank you, Teresa M for three contributions to TKG. If I refresh the page, it's a different thank you. Uh, oh, okay. Maybe we consider something like that. But for me, the attribution to the companies who are sponsoring us is much, much more crucial. All right. Next topic then. I think we're settled on board and officer elections. Social media posting status report. Two weeks ago when we had our meeting, we discussed guidelines for social media posting. And I think we can com be comfortable that there've been improvements in the last two weeks based on the guidance that was offered. The social media posts have been technically focused and there've been several since we last gave that guidance. Um, however, one of the challenges is the social media, the folks who work on the social media like Alyssa are not generally as connected to technical topics as the rest of us are. Please, if you've got an interesting thing that you think might be useful to post to Jenkins social media, please submit a proposal to, for it to the Advocacy and Outreach Gitter channel. Now, after a conversation with Alyssa, she came back and suggested, she and I came to the conclusion, maybe we should allow an occasional purely social post, but only as a small fraction of the total post, think one in 10 or one in five, so that if we want to do something purely social, we still could. Uh, other board members, do you have any comments or insights on that? Would it be okay to have an infrequent so purely social post or no, let's keep them entirely technically focused? Uli, I think you were the, 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 crew, the key one who suggested let's be technically focused. Anything you suggest? Yeah. It's it's hard to, to decide when I don't know what the content is. Uh, so I think uh, it's for me, or, or let's say it so, uh, it's fine for me if uh, Alyssa is proposing it and we are gathering a lot of plus ones, then it's fine. So, yeah, it, it's hard now to say, no, I don't want it. And, and maybe it's really a good idea to have it. 
So, so we uh, that, that's a good insight. We may want more plus one votes on a yeah. social to topic. Yeah, that's a good idea. Than on a than on a technical topic, right? Because technical topics are much less likely to be controversial. Good, okay. Others, any insights there or comments that you want to share? Okay, so I'll discuss it further with the with advocacy and outreach and bring back a, a summary of, of where we're at from that. Thank you. Next topic was on the Azure credits donation. So we're very grateful to Microsoft. They've donated $40,000 to the Continuous Delivery Foundation that's been credited to the Jenkins Azure account. And Damien has opened an infrastructure help desk ticket to show progress on consuming those donated credits. The goal being that certainly by end of December, 2023, we'll have started consuming those credits for our ephemeral workloads as he described to us one or two meetings ago. Um, thanks, special thanks to Damien for what he's doing there. It's looking positive and promising and it has not risked or altered the payment processes we use for our Azure account, nor has it had to alter or damage the permission system. So big positive for having made infrastructure improvements without threatening the ongoing operation. Any questions mm -hmm. on the Azure credits? Okay, last topic then is Oracle Cloud cost donations. Still no progress. Um, I, I think it's worth just removing this from the governance board list because there's truly nothing we can do about it. I'm, I'm sort of done asking Oracle to take the action that's needed when they next ask me, Mark, when are you going to pay us these $0 invoices? I will again refresh to them. You need to make them non $0. Any concerns there if I just remove this one from the from the board list? Sounds good to me. Okay, great, thank you. Any other topics before we close our meeting for today? Dear, did I fail to turn on? I'm a little worried I may have failed to turn on. Rec oh, well. I Let's... think you did because I got the notice when you started. Oh, good, all right, thank you. Then I'll stop the recording now. Thanks everyone.